Hi, I'm Matthew Trigali with Smart Shield Property Management. In, in this video, I want to answer the question, what costs are there associated with owning a rental investment property in the Charlotte, North Carolina area? So there are five costs associated with every investment property and then two other costs that we'll touch on at the end. So the five standard costs are going to be management, maintenance, vacancy, taxes, and insurance. So I'm going to touch on each of these one at a time. So management, uh, now whether or not you're going to be a DIY landlord and do this on your own, or you're going to hire a professional property manager to take care of everything for you, you still need to factor in management cost. Because even as a DIY landlord, your time is worth something. As a matter of fact, I would like to tell you that there's nothing more valuable to you other than your time. So factor that in. So how much should you factor in for management costs? Uh, you can shop around and look at this. For a quick and dirty rule of thumb, probably just plugging in 10% in your calculations should get you in the right ballpark. Uh, the next thing we covered was maintenance. So here you're gonna wanna factor in the age of your house, uh, the current condition of the property. So obviously newer houses that are in pretty good condition already, you can put in a pretty low number for your maintenance costs, maybe something like around 5%. But if you have an older house or a property that you already know is gonna need a lot of work, then you might wanna put in a higher number. One little tricky spot to factor in is buying a house that's about 10 years old. Well, a house is about 10 years old, although it's relatively new, it may still essentially have all of its original components. So it may be prime time for it to start having issues. Like a new water heater may be needed in the first couple of years of owning the property, or a new HVAC system may be needed within the first three to five years of owning that property. So that could be one little tricky spot where I don't want you to get deceived. So factor that in. The next thing we talked about here is vacancy. So this is really going to depend on if you have a property that you expect to have a higher vacancy rate or a lower vacancy rate, and that's basically gonna be determined by the quality of the property, the location of the property, uh, the quality of the tenant it might attract. So I like to say the sweet spot here is about a twelve dollars to $1,600 a month property. A property that rents for that price range, you're probably gonna attract, number one, a tenant that makes a decent income and probably has decent credit, uh, but you may also attract a tenant that plans on renting for multiple years before they eventually either move or buy. If you're renting less than that, like something that's less than $1,000 a month, here's where you have to get into riskier tenants or riskier properties. These are gonna have a higher chance of eviction or a higher chance of abandonment, things like that. And you might have a higher vacancy rate. Uh, when you start going a lot higher than that, something that's $1,800 a month or higher, here you're attracting somebody who may be only living in the house temporarily. They may be a great tenant in terms of their credit profile and income, but they may be just moving to town, living here for a year while they look around for a house to buy, and they might buy a house after a year. So you'd actually have a higher vacancy rate with those houses. But anyway, you're gonna wanna factor in here, do you expect this property to be vacant every one to two years or vacant every three to five years? and then go ahead and calculate your vacancy rate there when you do your calculations. And the fourth and fifth ones here were taxes and insurance. These will be pretty easy to figure out because you'll have actual numbers. Now on insurance, I do wanna point out that when if this is a house that you had previously owned and lived in, you're gonna to have to switch insurance products to something that is designed for landlords. And it's slightly different and costs a little bit, a little different than what your homeowner's insurance costs. So talk to an insurance agent or we can help put you in touch with one and get that right number for the insurance. And then taxes, you'll obviously be able to look up and see what the tax rate is on the property and plug that in. So those are the five key factors. And if you just wanna do a real quick analysis of any property, generally that that number is going to be about 40% of the max gross rent. On the high end, it might be 50% if it's a riskier property or a lower end property. The other two things that, that I said we mentioned at the end of this video here are debt service, so your mortgage payment, and HOA dues. So if you have a property that you're considering buying or turning into a rental property, and you'd like some assistance in figuring out if this is a good deal for you or what the cash flow would be like and what your expenses would be like on that property, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. We'd be happy to help you analyze the deal here at Smart Shield Property Management, the intelligent investor's choice.